Hi, this is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. Welcome to the channel and to our ninth video in the introductory R series. We've been learning mostly about base R, but now we're going to change gears and learn about the set of packages called the Tidyverse. The Tidyverse is a set of packages designed to facilitate common data manipulations. Once you get the hang of them, I think you'll like them a lot, especially if you're not coming from a programming background. The Tidyverse packages were created mostly by Hadley Wickham, some with the help of other people. The Tidyverse commands assume that your data is in tidy format. So let's begin by talking about what that means. We've seen data organized into tables. In a table, values are stored in a grid where each value belongs to a row and a column. Each value is an observation or part of an observation. For example, if I take the temperature right now, that is an observation. The other values that are associated with that observation depend on why the data is being collected, what questions we're hoping to answer when we collect the data. So we might also record, as part of the observation, the calendar date of the observation if, for example, we want to look at temperature changes over time. In this example, the date is part of the observation. One observation might be 48 degrees Fahrenheit on November 19th, 2023, and another might be 31 degrees Fahrenheit on November 20th, 2023. In tidy format, each row is an observation and each column is a variable or piece of the observation. If we're going to store our temperature data in tidy format, we create a table with two columns, date and temperature, the two categories of value that make up an observation. And each time we record an observation, it will include those two values in a single row. A non-tidy way I could store the information is if I put the dates as columns and put the temperature reading for each date as a value in one column. All of the values are in the table, but part of the observation is embedded in the table structure. It's a variable rather than being a value in a row. In a tidy table, the variables, the different categories of values being collected for each observation, should be columns. Let's now look at some tidyverse manipulations of our AI data. I have here a script called tidy1.r that reads in the entire data set using read underscore CSV. You might recall that read CSV requires that we import reader, which is one of the packages in the tidyverse. We will import a larger set of tidyverse packages by writing if not require tidyverse, install.packages tidyverse, and then library tidyverse at the top of the script. That installs, if not already installed, and loads reader as well as dplyr, ggplot2, tidyr, per, tibble, and others. I'll include a link in the description to a tidyverse blog post that describes each of these packages, and as we learn some tidyverse commands, I'll let you know which packages a command comes from. Now you might recall that the data type of the table that is returned from read CSV is a tibble, which is a special tidyverse data frame that is a little more powerful than an R data frame. Tibbles are from the tibble package. Let's look first at the AI data tibble and decide whether it's in tidy format. There are four columns, entity, code, year, and invest. We can ignore the code column because it is all NA values, but the other columns, entity, year, and invest, do the values stored in each row under those variables represent an observation? Yes, an observation is an amount spent in a particular year on a particular category of AI research. It would not be in tidy format if, for example, we had columns for 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021, and the amount spent for each year was stored in the column labeled by the year. Each row in that example contains five observations, not one, and some of the values, the years, are column names rather than values in a row. Let's start with two ways to extract data from our tibble, filter and select. These two commands are from the dplyr package. Filter allows us to extract rows based on a condition, and select allows us to extract columns. Both of these commands return a tibble. Let's say we want to know which categories of AI spending in 2021 were greater than $10 billion. I'm going to show this in the console, and then once we've worked out the full command, we'll add it to our script. 
we will write filter and then in parentheses first the table we want to filter and second the logical condition we want to filter by in writing the logical condition we may refer to the columns in the first parameter, the tibble, directly by name. My tibble has columns, entity, year, code, and invest. So I can use any of those names in my logical condition, and filter will know I'm referring to the tibble that's the first parameter. So I can write in parentheses, AI data, the name of my tibble, comma, and then invest greater than 10 billion ampersand remember that's the and operator year equals equals 2021 close parentheses and I'll press enter that returns a new table with only four rows data management processing cloud financial tech medical and healthcare and total. Let's try it again, excluding total, since that's not a separate category. So I'm going to use the up arrow to get my command, and I'm going to add to my condition, and entity is not equal to total. Total is in quotes because that's character data and I get just the three rows that are categories. Now suppose we only want to see the entity and the invest columns, since code is always NA, and year is now redundant, since we're only looking at 2021. For choosing specific columns for our resulting tibble, we use select. If we want to select from our prior result, we'll need to store that in a tibble. I'll use the up arrow, and in front of our filter command, I'll type over 10 bill 2021 is assigned the value of and press enter. And now that new tibble is in our workspace and we can use the select operation on it. So we're going to select just the columns or variables that we want in our resulting tibble. We'll write select open paren and then the name of our tibble over underscore 10 bill underscore 2021 comma. And then we can list the columns we're interested in. Entity, comma, invest, close paren, enter. And now we see the same rows, but with only the two columns we selected. And just a note, we can subtract columns this way as well. So I could write over 10 bill 2021 minus code and then I get all of the columns except the code column. So I'm going to put both of the commands into our script and add a view for the resulting table, which I'll call 2 call 10 build 2021. Now let's look at mutate, another command in the dplyr package. Mutate allows you to add columns to a data frame. Suppose we would like to mutate the invest column into something a little more suitable for a label on a graph. The numbers as they are are quite large and would not read well as labels on a graph. Let's create a new column, which is the invest column divided by 1 million. The new column would represent investment in millions of dollars. To do that, we type mutate, open paren, and then the name of our tibble. You might be seeing a pattern here. The name of the tibble is always the first argument to the command, and then the other arguments may reference the columns or variables in that tibble. So let's do this to the entire AI data tibble. So mutate open paren AI data, comma, and then we type the name we want to call our new column. I'll write invest millions, and then equals, and then invest divided by a million, close paren, and enter. And we can see the top rows of that tibble. The numbers are smaller, but you'll notice there's a decimal point. Let's use the up arrow and wrap a view around that command so we can see the whole table. And yes, the numbers are smaller, but we still have all the digits 
They're just now to the right of the decimal. I want something that will be more readable. Let's add a round command to our mutate. So I'm going to do it over in the console and I'll wrap a view around it to start. So view open paren mutate open paren and then the name of our tibble AI data comma and then invest millions equals round open paren invest divided by a million comma digits equals zero close paren for the round close paren for mutate and close paren for view and enter and that table is just what I want short-ish numbers that would be more readable as labels on a chart or graph. Let's add that up in our script, except I'll store it in a tibble and then view that tibble. I'll call the tibble AI underscore invest underscore millions. This is pretty cool so far, right? Let's look at one other cool tool, and that's the pipe tool. Again, notice that the first argument to each of the commands we've just learned filter, select, and mutate is a tibble. And in one case, I stored the result in a tibble so I could pass it to another command. I stored the result of filter in a tibble so I could pass it to select. That's a very common thing to want to do. The pipe makes that easier. Using the pipe, we don't have to store intermediate steps in tibbles. I'll demonstrate this by adding the invest millions column to our AI data table, then filter by extracting only the 2021 rows, and then select the entity and invest millions columns only. Now you might see two kinds of pipes. The first pipe comes from the McGrider package, which is installed as part of the tidyverse, and that pipe looks like percent right angle bracket percent, no space between them. But there's a newer pipe, which is part of base R, and that looks like the straight bar or operator, sometimes itself called a pipe, and the right angle bracket. Hadley Wickham, again, the person who created much of the tidyverse, suggests that you use the base R pipe. So that is the pipe we'll use here. We begin with the table we're starting with. So AI data pipe, and then mutate. And now we don't list the tibble. The pipe takes the tibble that results from whatever comes before and passes it as the first parameter to the command after. So AI data will automatically be passed in to mutate. So mutate, open paren, and then invest millions equals round, invest divided by a million, digits equals zero. And then pipe again. And this is going to send that mutated tibble as the first argument to filter. So filter, open paren, year equals equals 2021, close paren, pipe, select, open paren, entity, comma, invest millions, close paren, and we'll press enter. So starting with AI data, we now have a table of the 2021 investments with the entity column and our newly created invest millions column created at the start of this pipe. This is convenient because we don't have to save all of our intermediate steps. I'd recommend as you're learning these commands to test each intermediate step and make sure it is resulting in the table you expect. But once you've got it working, you can use the pipe to shorten your code and keep your workspace cleaner. I'll add this command to our script with a view, and I'll call the resulting tibble invest millions 2021. I will use the regular assignment operator to assign the piping operation to that tibble. I hope you found this interesting. The tidyverse commands provide a very convenient interface for accomplishing many common data manipulation tasks. The code, as always, will be uploaded to my GitHub repository with a link in the description. There are book recommendations in the description of this video, and you might look through the exercises in the books to find ways to practice. You can also practice by rewriting the manipulations here and try creating columns that are interesting to you, filtering on different criteria, and selecting different columns. Have fun with it.